Hello, I'm Rich Prager from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, we are here at the STS meeting. We'd like to talk a little bit this morning about uh, the linkage of two databases. Essentially, we, we're going to talk about the CMS database and the STS database, and whether linking these can help CMS, the STS, our patients. And with that, uh, we have two experts on this. Jeff Rich from Virginia. Uh, and Jeff Jacobs from Florida. And Jeff, if you could start and help us all a little bit understand the CMS database and what it is, and then we'll talk about the SDS database as well. Sure, so as providers, we're always submitting bills to CMS, particularly Medicare bills, obviously, uh, occasionally Medicaid bills. But uh, most of us uh, submit bills through a format called the UBO4. And within the UBO4 contains all the financial data about every patient encounter that we have, uh, mainly inpatient but also outpatient. And uh, the CMS database collects financial data on that encounter and all encounters for any individual patient, yourself or myself included, and we use that to pay claims. CMS, that's how they pay claims. You submit a bill through the UBO4 processing centers and uh, you will get paid for your services. And the uh, CMS database is a very powerful, very accurate uh, financial database that exists out there and, and is used nationally to, again, pay claims. To pay claims. Right. And, and Jeff, tell us a little bit about the STS database. Well, the STS database is the largest clinical registry of patients undergoing cardiac and thoracic surgery in the world. It has three components. It has the adult cardiac surgery database, it has the general thoracic surgery database, and the congenital heart surgery database. The adult cardiac database contains millions of records of patients who have undergone adult cardiac surgery, mostly in the United States. The congenital heart surgery database captures information about patients undergoing pediatric and congenital heart surgery, and the general thoracic database captures information about patients undergoing lobectomy, pneumonectomy, and a variety of general thoracic surgical procedures. I think the difference between the type of data in the STS database and in Medicare is important to understand when we consider this topic. The STS database contains very detailed clinical information, information about diagnoses, procedures, preoperative risk factors, and postoperative complications. Medicare data contains claims data, as Jeff said, billing data, so it has a fairly detailed collection of information about the cost of healthcare delivery, medications that are provided, uh, but it lacks some of the rich clinical data in the STS database. Therefore, the marriage of those two databases allows one to pool information together so that the two sources of information can complement each other. So let me ask you another question and then we'll let Jeff tell us about his 20 years of experience with it. But what, what is linkage? What does right. it mean? So. I think about linkage as one has database A, say the STS database, that contains one group of variables, facts, data, information, and then we have database B that has a second set of information. And one can use either one of those databases to answer a set of questions. If we can get the two databases to talk to each other, we potentially can answer a set of unique questions that neither individual database can answer alone. A variety of strategies exist to link the records within two different databases. And technically, one can use terms like probabilistic matching and deterministic matching. Probabilistic matching is when we take variables that are common to each database that are not unique identifiers, but by matching a series of these variables together, we can link records from database A to database B. So one could take the patient's date of birth, date of admission to the hospital, and the name of the hospital and by matching those variables from database A and database B, link the two data sets together. Alternatively, deterministic matching, we can take unique identifiers in each database, such as a social security number, and link the two data sets together that way. Once the databases are linked, they become a common linked data set that then can answer questions that neither database can answer independently. You've got practical experience with this for years in Virginia. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did and how it evolved and where it took you, essentially? Sure. So we realized very early, and, and I would uh, refer to the Northern New England experience, that uh, a regional collaboration, and your experience as well, is important in improving quality. 
However, we were determined in the state of Virginia to also go beyond that, to take uh, the financial aspects of health care delivery and make us accountable for the financial delivery of health care, and not only on a clinical basis, but now on a financial basis. So 20 years ago, we decided that uh, it would be important to have a database that can contain both elements, as Jeff said, uh, both the clinical and financial. And, and we did, uh, because the SGS database is de-identified, we, we did the probabilistic uh, matching algorithm, and it's probably more than we want to talk about, but uh, we were able to link 99.9% .9 of our records from clinical and financial uh, records to create a common database that was a clinical financial tool for us to look at outcomes, to look at the impact of outcomes and their complications of the operations that we perform on the cost of healthcare delivery. We were able to look at the resource utilization within healthcare delivery and uh, streamline the way that we treated patients by reducing some of the resources that we use without impacting quality. And we had a way to actually monitor that, to go through time and say, all right, we're not going to get nine x-rays on every patient. We'll get four. And none of us, or all of us, can say that, you know, looking at the clinical side of the database, uh, there's been no impact on patient quality. So we did that 20 years ago and we've created uh, directed um, projects within the state of Virginia to help reduce health care costs, uh, both on the delivery side, reducing complications, resource utilization, and then just looking at the complications that occur, the cost of the complications, and trying to make us, again, accountable for the financial aspects of health care delivery as well as the clinical aspects. So uh, having said that, we spent the last 20 years uh, identifying the two databases, linking them together, and using that tool uh, to achieve the goals that I have just stated. Okay. So, and we'll get we'll get back to you because we need some help in how come other people aren't doing this and how do how do we make this effective across the country? But but on the hundred thousand foot level, tell us what this can do for the future as well, not just at one state, but where does the SDS go with this? Well, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons was able to build on the foundational work that Jeff and his group did. And by following up on a regional linkage of STS data to Medicare or clinical data to Medicare, as was done in Virginia, STS took on the challenge of linking the STS national database to Medicare data. And this was again done through matching with indirect identifiers using the same type of methodology used in Virginia. And once this was done, we now have a linked data set between STS data and Medicare data on a national level. And this linked data set has now been used for a variety of different purposes and in the future will be used for either, even more purposes. One example is the linked data set has been used to do comparative effectiveness research. So that means we could compare outcomes of treatment A versus treatment B. And we certainly can do that within the STS database with endpoints of hospital discharge in 30 days. But by linking to Medicare, we can do comparative effectiveness research over one year, three years, and even five years by taking clinical information in the STS database, linking it to longitudinal information in Medicare data, and then doing comparative effectiveness research uh, to compare two different treatment options with the linked data set. And I think that's maybe the initial purpose of the linkage. And beyond that, we've been able to use the linked data set for a variety of other types of research and quality improvement projects as well. So Help us with, with some of the other things be, uh, sure. be, besides just that. Sure. Um, so I think number one think is the comparative. Five or ten yeah. years from now. Right. So, well, number one is comparative effectiveness research. Number two is basic longitudinal follow-up of patient outcomes. STS data stops at hospital discharge in 30 days. Medicare data now is, allows us to follow patients over the course of their lives. So I think the two first purposes are comparative effectiveness research and longitudinal follow-up. A third potential use, which we're just starting to tap into, is for longitudinal device surveillance. So when a patient has a pacemaker, a heart valve, uh, even an in implanted ventricular assist device within their body, the linked Medicare data to STS data will allow longitudinal device surveillance of all of these devices, capitalizing on the rich clinical information in STS database with the longitudinal outcome data in Medicare. Then a fourth potential use is very similar to what Jeff has done in Virginia, which is to study healthcare economics. 
and to study the relationship between outcomes and cost and to assess quality by studying the relationship with outcomes and cost. The STS database has very detailed information about the outcomes but does not have information about the cost. So by linking the two data sets together, we can now study healthcare economics. And I think, finally, the, it, it allows the STS database to be a tool for advocacy in a variety of domains for patients undergoing heart surgery and for healthcare providers caring for patients who need heart surgery. So information from the linked data set can be used to create quality measures that would be endorsed by the National Quality Forum and could even be used to assess value of healthcare delivery in places like the Relative Value Unit Update Committee, the RUC. So, so Jeff, obviously you change practice with this, in styles of practice, uh, uh, approaches to patients. Um, could, can you give us, besides the nine x-rays to four x-rays, can, can you tell us how this advanced Virginia and uh, um, how the monies, if you will, that you noted were saved, how this affected care and your hospitals? Did it change relationships between physicians and hospitals? Um, did this create a better bond or teamwork approach in the hospitals, change the culture? Sure, so um, we've always worked together as professionals to improve the quality of our patient care and, and the delivery of that care. Uh, the linked database did something really phenomenal and it was a tsunami of interest by the hospitals. We developed with the linked database a true physician hospital collaboration where we actually started working with our hospitals to understand healthcare delivery not only at the clinical level but at the financial level because I would submit that we throughout our training throughout our professional lives have understood how to deliver high quality care and how to deliver the clinical aspects of uh, good patient care. But we've neglected, and not because we've willingly done that, but we've just neglected the fact that we are also responsible for the financial aspects of our healthcare delivery. And this database brought that to the front. It brought us together, the hospitals and the physicians within the state of Virginia to begin to work together, to understand each other, to understand what they need, what we need, and how are we going to create that equipoise between hospitals and physicians in delivering the highest quality care at the lowest cost. And we wanted to improve the quality of care for patients on a daily basis and on an individual basis. So I would submit, I mean, Jeff you know, talked about research. Well, this wasn't about research. This was about the practical aspects of how I'm going to make my institution stronger and how I'm going to make my practice or our practices stronger within the state so that we can provide and maintain a, a system of care that improves quality and reduces costs. So on a practical level, you know, the resource utilization is one way, but we looked at the cost of complications. So the cost of complications is enormous. So a stroke after cardiac surgery costs fifty to seventy thousand dollars additive monies in order to care for that patient. Infections after surgery. We looked at the cost of complications and we said what complications can we address easily, quickly. Atrial fibrillation was one. We can reduce atrial fibrillation at an average cost of ten thousand dollars per patient per hospitalization if we can eliminate atrial fibrillation. So we had a directed project within Virginia to reduce atrial fibrillation. We've saved 20 some million dollars to the hospitals over time. We looked at, on the resource utilization standpoint, uh, blood transfusions, not just x-rays, but blood transfusions. We reduced blood utilization within the state after, before, during, and after surgery and saved an additional 60 million dollars. I implemented the protocol within my hospital and within eight months we saved a million dollars and my CEO gave me an award for that All right. for having, <laughs> having accomplished that because that got their attention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we did that, we, we did outcomes research we, or an outcomes uh, modification, we did resource utilization modification and generally we were able to prove that improving quality reduces costs and 
for three moments in time. You know, I, I testified in front of Congress three times about the value of that enterprise and why it's going to change the direction of healthcare. The Society of Thoracic Surgeons was highly recognized for that effort, uh, and they were put on a pedestal saying, why can't the rest of healthcare do what you've done? And I think, you know, with Jeff's effort and with your efforts in Michigan, we have been recognized as being leaders in, in healthcare economics and quality improvement for the last 20 years, for the last two decades. It's unbelievable. I mean, I worked in D.C. and I know what it's like to be able to walk into a meeting and have people ask me about the Society of Thoracic Surgeons yeah. and the database and the efforts that we've done, all of us collectively, to change the way that we deliver care and change the way that we are going to help the United States maintain and sustain its healthcare delivery system. Because what we want is what we have now. Yeah. We want to have the same healthcare system. We want to be able to afford it, and we have to figure out ways to do that. And one of the ways is to link our databases through um, the efforts of Jeff, the SCS, and the efforts of you in Michigan. I, can, I, think, Go ahead. I think that uh, what, what you said is, is extremely important. Ultimately, when you get beyond the science and the details of linking database A to linking database B, it's really about creating a tool that allows us to take better care of our patients. And this information allows us to deliver better health care, to care for our patients better. And that plays out in a variety of domains, but ultimately it, it's a tool to take better care of our patients. So let me, probably as we draw to a close, nuance it just a little bit. I'm not sure either of you are directly involved with training the future of our specialty residents. How, how are there other things we should do in how we educate the next generation so that they understand this? And this becomes how, two things become part of how they practice. One is an understanding of this, not the probabilistic matching, but that this is important to understand in how you practice, because it's the way we should practice, one. And then two, how you relate to an institution as an individual practitioner or a group that this is a team of some sort, the hospital administration and the physicians in there. So do we change how all of us came through residencies? Do we add something so that this keeps going and actually has even more energy and proponents for it? Sure, I mean, I, I, I'll start and I'm sure Jeff has a lot of ideas. Um, training our residents uh, in this area is extremely important. The economics of healthcare is so important right now. Uh, every time you pick up a newspaper, every time you know we are pressured on a yearly basis or a biannual basis uh, in terms of reimbursement, we're always faced with the same questions and the same pressures. How are you going to deliver that high quality care at reduced costs? And uh, it's not just training our residents, it's retraining our workforce. It's educating you and me about why it makes a difference or how we can make a difference in sustaining and maintaining our healthcare delivery system today and going forward in the future because training a resident is fine, but the impact of that may not be for 10 years. What we want is immediate results. And immediate results is having that collective wisdom with the clinical financial tool that says, look, Jeff, look, Rich, this is what it's costing you to deliver this high quality care. Let's not just ignore the financial aspects of healthcare delivery. It's very important and it's what the Affordable Care Act is all about. It's what we're faced with on an annual basis every day. We are looking at reductions in reimbursements and we're always pressured to take care of increasingly sick patients, get better and improved results and do it in a financially responsible way. And without the tool that you know Jeff's working on nationally and we've worked on in Virginia and you're working on in Michigan, we'll fail. And so what we want to do is retrain our workforce, the current workforce, and train our upcoming residents. I understand. Jeff, some yeah, concluding yeah. comments? I, I think that that's some, again, extremely important points raised by Jeff. In reality, in 2015, to be able to provide quality health care one has to have a good understanding of the science of outcomes analysis, quality improvement, and patient safety. 
And in order to gain a grasp on those three domains, outcomes analysis, quality improvement, patient safety, one has to understand a little bit about databases, linked data sets, and the ability to use these tools to provide better care to our patients. Within STS, we've created a research center. And the STS Research Center now is a platform for linking the STS database to a variety of other databases, not only Medicare data, but other databases like the database from the American College of Cardiology, cancer registries, and even pediatric databases in, the, in pediatric administrative data sets like the FIS database of pediatric healthcare information systems. And through the STS Research Center, we now have funded research initiatives to link these data sets together to use this tool to be able to improve our ability to provide quality health care. And how that fits in with training, I think, is that in order to have the ability to provide quality health care today, one has to not only understand the details of caring for patients, but the details of assessing outcomes, of quality improvement, and of patient safety. And I think that has to be not only part of training of trainees, but ongoing continuing medical education of all healthcare providers. If we can understand how these data sets worked, and even these linked data sets work, we then have a tool that allows us to take better care of our patients. Yeah. Well, thank you for the rich discussion this morning. On behalf of the STS, I thank both of you. Uh, I think this was both very informative and thoughtful and uh, I think shows our impatience at trying to make everything better as fast as we can. So thank you all. Thanks, Rich.